Blog Talk Radio, the world's largest online radio network. Welcome, welcome all of you readers to Authors on the Air. This is Ann White, one of the co-hosts, and I am so happy to be here with one of my favorite authors, C.J. Lyons. But before we get the party started, let me introduce you to the sassy one of us, the co-host, Pam Stack. Good morning, Pam. Um, hello there. Good afternoon. How are you it today? Wonderful. I, I am thrilled that we have this fabulous lady visiting with us today. What a talented woman. Before we get started, though, Anne, um, I'd like to tell our listeners where they can find us. You can locate us on Facebook at Authors on the Air. And if you go there and like us, we, we love it. Every 50 likes, uh, there are free giveaways, Amazon gift cards, free ebooks, free tree books. So please go there and like us. Additionally, you can find us on the web at www.authorsontheair.com. Uh, you can look around. We have an e-bookstore. There are reviews. There are blogs. There are MP3 archives for all the authors who we've had the pleasure and honor of interviewing. So stop by there um, whenever you get a chance and stop by often. And I would like you, since you've been gushing and gushing all week long, and here we are at the end of the week, I'd like you to go ahead and introduce this woman who is one of your faves. Will you take it she away? Is. She is. And, and CJ knows why, and most of the listeners do too, because my night job is as a trauma chaplain. And when I opened her first book, which was the Hart and Drake series, and it began with the sound of the trauma helicopter landing, she had me at the chop of the helicopter. So I am so pleased. C.J. is a pediatric ER doc turned suspense thriller author. And I want to make her agent happy today because I am going to introduce the award-winning, critically acclaimed, New York Times and USA Today best-selling author, C.J. Lyons. C.J., do you think we've made your agent happy today? Oh, you've made me happy. <laughs> <laughs> welcome oh to the show, C.J. Welcome, welcome. Thank you, guys. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> CJ, I've been waiting for Blind Faith. It came out on, what, the 31st of July. And the moment it hit my iPad, I started it. I'm loving it. But I, I noticed that when I was looking at some of the reviews for it, it says that it's got a, a brand new ending and it's a new beginning to a series. Can you give us the history of Blind Faith? Is, is it a, why would it have a new ending? Was it published before? Yes, actually, um, I self-published it as an e-book, and it's the book that hit um, the New York Times. It debuted at number two on the combined print and e-book list, stayed on the New York Times list for it was either six or seven weeks, and it also climbed as high as number four on the USA Today list last summer. Wow. After that, uh, St. Martin's Press um, approached me um, about – taking over the rights and publishing it in mass market paperback format. And they had a, a wonderful editor that I'm just thrilled to be working with, Kelly Raglan, who's head of their Minotaur division. And she fell in love with one of the secondary characters. And if you read the reviews, which right now, since the, the new version just came out, almost all those reviews are about the old version, the first version. And most of the people that didn't like it, they didn't like it because they also fell in love with the secondary character, and they didn't like his ending. So Kelly's like, we have to give him a second chance. And so when I went back to rewrite his character, that meant rewriting at least about a third of the book. But mm -hmm. I think it did come out better in a lot of ways because by changing that character's ending and giving him a chance at redemption – it deepened a lot of the emotional um, uh, aspects of the plot, and it also highlighted a lot of the really, really tough um, choices that these characters have to face because it's really they're in a true dilemma. There's, uh, it's a lose-lose situation pretty much every step of the way. Um, so they really end up sacrificing a lot by the end, particularly this, this secondary character. So I figured if I was able to character? please my editor who fell in love yeah. with him, hopefully fans will also really enjoy this new version of Blind Faith. And, and who is the secondary character? 
Um, he's housed the, the sheriff department of the very small town in the Adirondacks of New York, yeah. um, Hopewell. And, of course, it's a fictional town. But Yes. Yeah, no, and I, I'm liking how so far, so that'll be great. That'll be great. Um, have you gotten any reactions to the new new one yet? Well, um, so far, since it just came out, uh, you know, on the 31st, <laughs> I really haven't had a chance to have many reviews yet. Um, I no- did notice a, a fan emailed me a copy of their review that they posted on Amazon, and they, they really enjoyed it. And it did, um, uh, I believe, get s- several good reviews from um, bloggers, such as the Criminal Element blog. Well, I'm looking well, forward to it. I'm about halfway through. Yeah, I'm about halfway through and loving it, and I do love Hal, so cool. Okay, go ahead, Pam. Congratulations on the reissue and new story of Blind Faith. It sounds like fun. Can't wait to read it. You actually have quite a book list, um, CJ. I, I'm I'm actually at your web page, and if I may, um, for those of, of your fans and our listeners, you can find CJ at cjlyons.net. Um, she's got a beautifully designed web page and, um, and substantial information about each and every one of her books. But I'd like to go back because Anne is so fond of you because of your connection to the emergency room and hers. Can you tell us a little bit, you know, when I was reading your bio, you said that there was a, a horrible death that changed the way you decided to write. Everything changed. Uh, your internship in Pittsburgh, correct? Correct. Can you tell us a little Are you comfortable telling us a little bit, even on the periphery, about that and how that ch- everything changed for you at that point? Well, I, I'm one of those people that I've been a writer and a storyteller all my life. It's just my way of coping with the real world and with the chaos that we all face every day. Right. And so... I wrote my first novel. It was a YA fantasy novel in high school, and then I kept writing through college and medical school. I wrote science fiction and fantasy. Then during my internship year at Children's Hospital Pittsburgh, like you said, everything changed. Um, I want you guys to try to imagine the life of an intern. It's not at all like what you see on Grey's Anatomy. (laughs) It's you're you're living so far apart from the rest of the world. You're so out of sync with them. And you're, you know, 25 years old, and you have the life of a child in your hands. And so it, it, it's just a, a really, um, it's almost like being uh, a, a soldier uh, in some ways, because you just, you really cling to your team. Um, those are the people that have your back. Those are the people that speak your language and that help you fight those battles that you face every day. So we became very, very close. And about halfway through our internship year, um, one of my fellow interns was murdered. And it was a a horrendous crime. Uh, It made national headlines. Um, The local, county, and state police departments all joined forces, and they did find the perpetrator very quickly. Uh, They were amazing. And, in fact, um, as part of Blind Faith's launch, I actually just established a new initiative called Buy a Book, Make a Difference. And I'm going to use um, Blind Face Launch to hopefully raise some money for some charities, but also to do some scholarships for uh, forensic training for underserved community police officers. And that scholarship that is named after Jeff. So it's my way I, of kind I saw of that your I saw that you um, have uh, made a space, and you've de- you've mentioned St. Jude's Children's Hospital blessing to you on that. My brother passed away up there, so I know the importance of the work they're doing. How did that change your writing? What happened to you after that happened? Well, I mean, Jeff was killed on a Thursday morning, and pretty much we were all back to work by Monday, facing those same challenges, those same life and death decisions. And the only way I could really cope with the the grief and the trauma um, was to write. But writing science fiction and fantasy just didn't didn't do it for me anymore. Um, my reality was just too stark compared to that escapism. I needed to feel 
that there was justice in the world and, and that good people could find the courage to make a difference. And so I, I wrote my first thriller, which is actually Borrowed Time. Um, last year it hit the USA Today list, so that was quite a, an accomplishment for mm-hmm. uh, very much the first thriller that I ever wrote. Congratulations. Um, and uh, I just, after that, especially choosing to, to specialize in pediatric emergency medicine, uh, which meant working with a lot of uh, victims of child abuse and sexual abuse, I just felt like it was my way of hopefully empowering and inspiring other people as well as dealing with the trauma that I saw every day in the ER um, was writing thrillers. So I actually, they're not your typical thrillers. They're not about the car chases and the explosions. Um, Each of them focuses on the relationship of the people, whether it's a romantic relationship or just a working relationship. But they're about the people. They're very character-driven. And they explore that gray area between the black and white of good and evil. But I felt I could do that best writing crime fiction. So I honestly haven't looked back ever since. Um, I think it's now up to 16 or 17 novels um, out there. Uh, With four in the way, I have several contracts still with New York City publishers in addition to the books I'll be publishing myself. Um, simply wow. because my fans want my books faster than New York City can deliver them, so they're they're um, congratulations on on the success of your first one out broad time. And just from a personal standpoint, let me um, let me send out uh, you know a special gold stars on your file. I um, also work with uh, families of domestic violence, so I, I totally understand what you're saying about empowerment and. You know, what I was going to go next with, with your ER and your pediatric and your medical background, did you do the Hart and Drake series next? Is that what followed, or what followed Borrowed Time? Actually, uh, you're right. Um, Hart and Drake were the next books um, I wrote, and those actually um, were the first books that I ever sold to New York City. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> And this is just how the publishing industry is. So for someone that works in the ER, and you guys will understand this with your backgrounds, you get to be rather of a control freak. Uh, and I had no <laughs> idea what I was getting into when I, I, I first signed with a New York City publisher. Uh, I thought it was going to be dream debut. It was supposed to come out in hardcover. I had 12 New York Times bestsellers that um, loved it and gave me cover quotes, including Sandra Brown that called mm-hmm. Nerves of Steel yeah. the perfect combination of romance and suspense, and so I was really excited, um, But and I even, uh, since I had sold a second book to the publisher, I quit my, my pediatric practice. After 17 years of being a doctor, I decided I had a chance to make a second dream come true with the writing, so I quit. I moved a 1,000 miles away from home, and I was looking forward to becoming a career novelist, but <laughs> there's always a but. Um, about 90 days well, before Nurses Ball was supposed to be published, it was um, withdrawn from publication by the publisher. It was canceled because of some cover art issues, so something I had no control over. So all of a sudden, for the first time in my life, I was unemployed. I was a 1,000 miles away from home. I had no job, <laughs> and, and I was like, wow. uh-oh. <laughs> um, my leap of faith maybe didn't pay off, but... I did what I've always done. I kept writing, and I kept writing. And I got my rights back to the um, Hart and Drake series, so that's how I was able to self-publish it several years later. Um, I got a new agent. Um, Another publisher came to me and asked me to create the Angels of Mercy series um, as a combination of ER meets Grey's Anatomy, and that had never been done before. But here's the thing. This is what tells you that karma has a real sense of humor. The book I wrote during those utterly depressing months when I felt I really had no future and I just had to write to work through that grief and that loss and that sense of betrayal, that book was Blind Faith. Oh, my so, goodness. Wow. That is, wow. that's a, all, I just that's got a remarkable goosebumps. story. I just got goosebumps, yeah. Yeah, you know, it, it talks about, it, it really speaks to your perseverance and your belief in what you were doing. Uh, I think it's amazing. 
Well, thank you. Um, most of my family wouldn't call it perseverance. They would call it just um, mule-headed stubbornness. But um, Whatever it, it is, it worked. Yeah, and I'm so glad you got the rights back to Nerves of Steel because that was the one that hooked me. That by the first paragraph, the first page, I was a C.J. Lyons fan, and I loved the entire Hart and Drake series. Um, but I know that there are three right now, and I read that you're going to give them a break a little bit. You've put them through a lot. Do you intend to do any more Hart and Drake in the future? I actually have I had a couple of niggling ideas about future books, but. You know, those characters are just so alive, and um, especially Hart, going through the, uh, she's a domestic violence abuse survivor, and that mm -hmm. actually, from medical school, I've worked with them, and that was my first research paper ever, was on domestic violence, and um, uh, I've seen it firsthand, unfortunately. So I really, really felt so just, amazed at the outpouring of fan mail after her books came out with people that said, thank you, you know, I lived through this, or a friend of mine has lived through this, and you painted it exactly like it really is, even though you're writing fiction. And that's what I always strive for, is that emotional reality. And that's one of the reasons why I call my books Thrillers with Heart, because the heart of it is that, that true emotion that I try to keep as real as possible and then the thriller stuff is the entertaining things. Um, but I really want to find a story that's worthy of doing a fourth book for them. So the soonest would probably be next year. Right now, um, although fans keep asking me for a fourth book there, um, my fans are really, really driving me to do more of the Lucy Gardino FBI thrillers. So right, yeah. I hope to have the third one, Kill Zone, um, which poor Pittsburgh, a good chunk of that city is going to get burned down in it. Um, uh, should be out in the fall. So hopefully that will keep my fans off my back long enough for me to <laughs> get my other books done. Oh, you want them on your back. You want them on your back. <laughs> you, you know, one I, thing, um, CJ, CJ, let me, one of the things I saw, when I was reading the Hart and Drake series, I read all three before I saw the covers. And then when I saw the covers, I was a little disappointed in Hart because I wanted her to look like you. So, <laughs> I just pictured her looking like you, and when I saw her, I thought, oh, she doesn't look anything like CJ. No, none of my care. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so well, I have to in my head. I want to I wanna say that, um, first of all, Pam? Are you still there? I think we just lost Pam. Oh, okay. Well, okay. I, if we're talking about casting for Hart and Drake, I've always pictured Jessica Alba as the perfect Hart, um, or maybe Maggie Gyllenhaal, because um, they just have that presence that she has, and yeah. yet they're vulnerable, you know. And, mm -hmm. and I love that how you can have that combination of strength and vulnerability in the same character, uh, which is why most of my protagonists are women, um, not just because I'm a woman, but because I just I, I love showing people that. You know, it doesn't matter what your gender is. It's what you do with the opportunities you're given. And that heroes really can be born every day and learn how to find the courage to step up and change the world. I know. And what I like, too, is that your heroes are real with their vulner vulnerability, like with Lucy, too. I, I love that series. She's a, um, an FBI agent, and yet she is strong but still has that human vulnerability that we do have. We do have. Yeah, I mean, Lucy's greatest fear is that she's not a good enough mother and wife because she just is devoted to her family, and yet she knows in her heart, I mean, this isn't like a reality-type knowing, but this is just kind of her way of thinking. And I interviewed a lot of FBI agents, and they said, oh, yeah, that is, it, it, you know, no one talks about it, but that really is how a lot of us feel, is that, if she doesn't devote everything she has to her work, if she doesn't give her work and the, the children she protects through it 110%, that something is going to come back and it's bad things will happen to her family. She just has that magical thinking. So she's always torn because she wants to give her family 110%, but she also wants to give the kids that are the victims that she's working for and protecting in her role as an FBI agent. So how can one person do both? 
Right. And, and really it shows that um, pull and tear that a lot of women who are professionals feel, more so with FBI, but I'm sure even in the medical field, women doctors have that pull and tear, you know, do I devote my time to my practice? I have a family. So um, it really shows that kind of tug that um, professional women do have. Oh, yes. I, and that's actually why I created Lucy's, because I was so tired of, in thrillers, if you had a female protagonist, they were almost always some kind of high-level, high-powered career woman, whether it was law enforcement or doctor or lawyer or reporter. Um, but no one ever addressed that. They always made them very much larger than life or driven by demons and or fighting, you know, the stalker serial killer. And And I really wanted Lucy to just be a normal, happy, you know, loving mother and, and wife. You know, she's a mm -hmm soccer mom and she loves that part of her life she just also happens to be an fbi agent who's very very good at a job that very few people want to do which is working crimes against children yeah wow. it's remarkable pam you're back with i'm us. yeah i'm sorry i had a coughing attack here and had had to kind of drop off uh i wanted to say and i don't know how much you heard uh, of me or not but I wanted to say I, I am a survivor of domestic violence myself, um, and I, so I want to thank you for empowering women. That it, it just makes a huge difference to see yourself in print and know that you come out ahead. That's just what I wanted to say. Thanks. But oh my God, know. you just made my day. I'm like choking up here, Pam. Thank you so much. No, um, it, it was really, you know, it was it was a horrible thing that happened. But I'll tell you what, it guides it guides my life every day. I'm I always say, you know, it's the best thing that ever happened to me because it wouldn't be to, who I am today. And and that's really really important, uh, you know. And, and we'll talk about that some other time. This is about you, but thank you for doing that. It's you have no idea how much it means to me personally. Well, I thank saw you. You're absolutely welcome. Thank you. you. <laughs> I really appreciate that. I saw mm -hmm. that you also work with one of my favorite people, that you have started a new series with someone named Erin Brockovich. <laughs> yeah. How yeah. did this well, we happen? About rock bottom and hot water and uh, what happened was um, she had read my Angels of Mercy books which are um, feature four different um, female medical professionals uh, and so she really loved how again you could be a strong woman and yet still be vulnerable and she really liked it that these women learned to be their own heroes instead of relying on someone else to come rescue them uh, which is basically what Erin preaches. I mean, if you read her blog or go to her website, you know, it's it's definitely about empowerment. It's about education and uh, that knowledge really is power. Um, so when she came to me uh, and her publisher came to me and asked me if I would consider working with her, uh, of course I had this, you know, high-pitched fangirl squee of delight. <laughs> like, <laughs> Um, the, it, those books were so much fun, and it was uh, the fun thing was is is trying to capture her voice, uh, and she really is just like Julia Roberts portrayed her in the movies. Um, we've never met in person, but we've had uh, phone conversations and email exchanges because her travel schedule is just incredible. The woman is just oh, amazing at what she does. Um, so uh, I had to try to capture her voice, and yet also you know, making a character that, that wasn't quite as strong and successful as Erin is now. So we kind of took it back to, well, what would have happened if everything in the movie didn't work? What would that person be? And we kind of used that as the basis of our A.J. Palladino character. And uh, I, those books are so much fun. Um, they're wonderful, wonderful, fast reads um, since it's summer, excellent beach reads. Uh, but, yeah, they were a lot of fun to do. Oh. Will you be writing, uh, collaborating with her again? Uh, you know, I don't know. She has gotten so busy, and so am I. Uh, so uh, Hot Water just came out, um, and I don't, I'm don't. i not certain that, that we're going to be able to collaborate again just because of our mutual time constraints. Uh, okay. But certainly, you know, the stories stand by themselves, um, and the fans will at least have those two books. 
Exactly. Is there anyone you'd like to collaborate with? Anybody else? Well, I mean, I, I'm one of those people that I learn every time I work with someone else. So if, you know, if I would ever think of working with someone else, um, it would probably be someone that's already a writer uh, so that I could learn more of the craft from them because I'm always trying to take my, my writing to the next level to give my readers more. And uh, so, you know, it would kind of depend on, on where I am and, and what the project was. But I'm one of those people, I'm open to any possibility. Yeah. Any, any wish, anyone on your wish list? Oh, gosh. Well, I mean, most of them are, are authors that are dead. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> uh, well, favorite author. I'm going to resurrect <laughs> one. There you go. Like Ray Bradbury. Um, oh, he was one of my, my first authors I fell in love with when I was a child reading his work, and, and I still reread. Uh, I've probably read Something Wicked, it, This Way Comes, a uh -huh. couple dozen times. Uh, he just, his poetry and the way he uses description to evoke emotion, there's just so much to learn from him. You know, before I, Pam, I know, wants to talk about the craft of writing, which almost would be a good segue, but I don't want to leave your books just yet because there's one more I want to ask about, one of the standalone thrillers, which I have not yet had a chance to read, but it's Lucidity. And I'm, a, I'm part of your – you have a book. Tell us about your book club where if you write a review, you get a book, and then explain because I got Lucidity and you said, oh, this is going to be different. Yeah. <laughs> would, you, would you explain how readers can, if they write reviews, get, get books from you? Um, I actually recently just changed that program to make okay. it easier for, for readers to get books from me. Now all they have to do is sign up for the Thrillers with Heart uh, mailing list, and that's my monthly newsletter. Uh, and it's not all about me. I've de that's why it's called Thrillers with Heart, is because I decided my readers deserve more than to just hear me yammering on about myself. So instead, I've tried to uh, feature interviews, um, like the first issue is an interview with Sandra Brown, just did a couple videos with Lee Child, and he went. He took us all behind the scenes of the new Jack Reacher movie. Um, wow. So things like that. That so it's not just all about me. But in that first issue that you get as a complimentary issue when you sign up, uh, there is a chance that you can uh, ask. You can request one. You can choose one of four of my eBooks. And the reason why I did four is because different people have different tastes. Um, so Nerves of Steel is in there. Uh, one of my romantic thrillers, Lost in Shadows. Uh, the first Lucy Gardino FBI mainstream thrillers in there, Snake Skin. And then I put Lucidity in there. And the reason why I put Lucidity in there is that it's probably the book that the smallest segment of my audience have, has read, but those that have pretty much uniformly loved it. And it was just one of those books in my heart that I could not not write. Um, I actually wrote it while I was under contract for another book, so it kind of pushed me into writing that other book very, very fast. But it's like I just could not get these characters' voices out of my head. Um, it's very different. It defies any genre labeling, so I just call it a ghost of a love story. But it features as the main character uh, a former ER doctor who has agoraphobia after witnessing her husband's murder and being brutalized herself, and she wakes up in the hospital for brain tumor. Well, mm. she's agoraphobic. All she wants to do is go home. So she's trying to escape the hospital, and she can't. And it turns out that the, the man that killed her husband um, is there in the psych ward, in a locked ward. There's also a couple of children that she meets who are at risk. Um, a time-traveling Jesuit priest helps to bring the ghost of her husband to life for one night to help her fight all this. And the real bad guy is a doctor that is trying out a new experimental mind control technique and wants to take it live to the general population and use it to control uh, large segments of the population. So it's got everything. It's got, it goes oh, wow. back to the fall of Atlantis to this new near future mind control science fiction thing. You got time travel, you got ghosts, I mean you name it. <laughs> it's got it in uh, there. Well I'm looking kind of forward to it. That was one of the ones that I got. By the way, I just signed up today. So oh, good. 
<laughs> okay, great. Well, you get to pick one of the books then. <laughs> yeah, and that was the one I picked, so I haven't read it yet, but I'm looking forward to it and getting my review back to you. And, you know, CJ, you're probably smart in broadening out and showing other authors because your fans love you so much that they're just nattering you for, can we have another Lucy? Can we have another Heart? This way maybe you can spread them out and get a little breathing space while you're creating the things you like to create as well. Exactly. And, in fact, um I'm having the third Lucy will come out this fall. The other book that fans have just been clamoring for is the third in the Shadow Ops series, and that will actually come out hopefully before the holidays. Uh, I'm actually collaborating with uh, a wonderful thriller romantic suspense author, uh, Cynthia Cook, who is also a fan, and she fell in love with the story. So we're working together on on that one. Um, And then I have um, my... New York City published books, uh, the uh, continuation of the FBI character from Blind Faith, Caitlin Tierney, uh, that next book, Black Sheep, comes out in, I think it's January or February, and then the third book in that series comes out in June. So if I can get all these books written this year, next year, for the first time in seven years, I'm going on vacation. (laughs) Good for you. There you go. You. Have you have you decided where you're going? By the way, well, it's I'm calling it vacation, but actually it's going to be more of a research trip because I have this idea for a kind of crazy YA science fiction, but I need to do some research in London and Paris, and I've never been to either city, so I'm kind of it, it'll be vacation, but it's also going to be definitely a lot of research. But you know what, honestly. Anything I do turns out to be research. It all goes in the book sooner or later. There you go. Now, uh, speaking of your books, I want to go back to your books because you have an interesting, uh, on your webpage I notice you have a, a little tag called For Writers. I, I don't, I'm sure that there are others who do this, but I don't think I recall anyone who talked as in-depth as you do for prospective writers, uh, we get calls all the time, and we we ask all the time. You know, what do you say to someone when they say, "Oh, I, I have, I think I have a book in me." Thank you for putting this up there. Tell us about four writers. No well, um, what four writers leads to is some resources uh, for people that are researching thrillers, but also a separate website called No Rules Just Write. Uh, because that's my motto. I don't believe in writing rules. I, I, believe, I believe in writing from your heart and finding your own passion and vision. Uh, so that leads to a blog, and honestly, I share everything I know. Now, we just went live with some multimedia classes that you do have to pay for because they are intensive. I mean, there's like hours and hours of video and audio, and I don't even know how many hundreds of pages of text. Uh, that we supply for those um, classes, and that's partnering with a wonderful um, author from the UK, Joanna Penn of thecreativepen.com. So Joanna and I joined forces because we both realized that neither of us, because we want to be writing our fiction, has time to do as much online teaching as we used to. And both of us were tired of saying no <laughs> to um, students that you know we just didn't have time to keep teaching classes. But this way. The material is available 365 days of the year, 24-7, and once people, you know, sign up for the courses, they can go at their own pace, they can mix and match segments, they can go out of order, they can leave questions for us, and Joanna and I will personally answer every single one of them. Um, So it's very convenient. It's a win-win for both of us. But I usually direct people first to um, the No Rules Just Write website, because that honestly I do share everything. Um I mean I really there's there's I don't have I don't hold anything back because I don't feel that writers are in competition. There mm-hmm. you guys know this because you're both avid readers and so am I. There's there's readers are starving for good books. And so we can't write them fast enough. There's no way we can be in competition. We just can't keep up with the demand. So I don't see that there's any reason to hold anything back. And I, I really, so many people helped me in my career. It makes me feel good to give something back. Oh. Well, it's, I'll, I I'll tell you what, I know you're benefiting a lot, a lot of, of up 
up-and-coming, aspiring writers. And that's a marvelous way to do it. We'll make sure we put that information on um, www.authorsontheair.com. And everything that you've told us, we're going to put your site up there, your Facebook page, and, and No Rules Just Right. So I, um, I have a question for you. Who inspires you? Oh, my gosh. So many people. It's really hard to say. Um, when I was in medicine, I don't think a day went by that I didn't witness some tremendous act of courage that if I hadn't been there, no one else would have noticed it um, because my patients and their families and the nurses and the other medical professionals I worked with, um, I mean, you guys, if you're in a profession like that, um, the law enforcement professionals I've worked with, it, it's just, in this day and age, we get very callous. I think it's because of all the TV and the movies um, and the way they portray life. Uh, we start to kind of buy into that and believe it. But really, if you look around, there are people changing the world every single day just by these simple, silent acts of courage. And it just, you know, not a day goes by that I don't be, see someone. Um, I think that's why um, Liberty Mutual, is an insurance company, has these wonderful series of little movies, and they incorporate some of them in their TV ads, where there's no talking, there's just music in the background, but you're watching someone do the right thing. You know, pick something up before a blind person can trip over it, or oh, hold the door from the yeah, table. Yeah. And I just love those, because that's truly how life is. If you just open your eyes and get out of your little self-awareness, cocoon and look around. Oh, Are there any writers cool. that inspire you? Yes, there are so many. I just came from Thriller Fest, so most of the ones I'll be naming are probably <laughs> the writers, because uh, I, I love going to Thriller Fest. I get to meet the people that I you know, just adore. Um, David Morrell, um, who wrote First Blood, uh, Rambo. Oh, um, he yeah, that was one of my favorite books. He's great. He's wonderful, and he's such a mentor. He gives so much back. I would not be here today if it wasn't for him. Um, Lisa Gardner, who's also been a mentor and a mm-hmm. friend for years mm-hmm. before I was even published, she just, every book she has pushes the boundaries as far as what you can do with the craft. Like her last couple books, the point of view uh, of the characters has just been so stupendous in the way she uses it to increase the suspense. Uh, I learned so much by reading her books, and she's just such a wonderful person. Um, Sandra Brown, I mean, talk about giving and generous and, and encouraging fellow writers. Uh, I mean, just wonderful. It, it, you know, I, I could just go on all day. <laughs> well, I think that's great. You, and you've said, of course, that Ray Bradbury was one of your heroes. So you are, uh, I think, in fine company, CJ. Oh, well, thank you. That's so sweet of you. And, and, you know, as we close this show, we usually ask what you would tell other authors, but now we can just tell other authors to just go to your website and go to For Writers. So instead, what I would like to do in closing the show, you know that I am a, a trauma chaplain, so I just want to wrap you in beautiful healing light that helps you to continue to achieve all of your dreams, all of your goals, to keep writing, to have a beautiful vacation in Paris and England, and just continue to be that inspiring and beautiful person that you are. So just consider oh, well, yourself wrapped in, in, in blessings. Thank you. I actually feel warm and tingly all over now. Thank you so much. Yeah. And I've never wow. done that, but you just seem, I just wanted to just wrap you because you're such an inspiration to so many others. And um, so. Truly, I have to say, CJ, you are. Mm-hmm. As um, one survivor to the other, I will tell you that I am honored that I've had the opportunity to speak to you. Uh, you, you. You've given me more inspiration to get out there and do more. Uh, to, to help others, and, and thank you for that. But I, I love to be motivated, motivated by other good people, and you've certainly done that. I have one silly question for you that I ask all of our guests who come on the show, and that is cats or dogs? Cats. Boo. There we go. <laughs> There's one on my side. See that? Okay. I know, the pride versus the pack. Leah, you... CJ Lyons, you 
have been a delight today. I cannot tell you how much fun it has been to speak to you. Um, I, I want to just remind our listeners and your fans that they can find you on Facebook at CJ Lyons, L-Y-O-N-S, or at your webpage at cjlyons.net. If you're interested in looking at CJ's uh, um, advice for up-and-coming writers, you go to norulesjustwrite.com. Is that correct, CJ? Correct. Yeah. Okay. And Anne? I just want to thank you so much. It's been a privilege and an honor to um, talk with you. I've been such a big fan, and I'm just going to go back and continue reading and writing reviews. And like I say, it's been a wonderful time sharing with you, CJ. Thank you so much for taking time in your busy schedule to be with us. Well, thank you guys for having me and for all the work you do in connecting readers with new writers. That really means a lot. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. All Take right, have care. A have, a, have a beautiful day. Yeah. Bye bye, CJ. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Wow. And wonderful. Yes. That is so, one incredible woman. That is it one was. incredible woman. It wow. was. I know. I told you I'm just blessed. I just feel tingly all over, so I really enjoyed that. Um, we have some wonderful shows coming up. And, Pam, would you yeah. tell us about your next favorite that you have coming up? Oh, well, yeah. yes, of course. Um, one of my most favorite authors ever is Robert Gregory Brown. He'll be visiting us on August 10th. We also have, um, so that's in a week from today. And then the following week, we're going to have our friend Mike Ferrissey back with his new book, Bombshell. Bombshell, yeah. And yes. Pam, we're going to have a surprise somewhere along because we those of you who were with us last week know that we had extreme technical difficulties trying to bring you Leland Dirks with his new book, Jimmy Mender and His Miracle Dog. Um, unfortunately, we had 15,000 listeners who were unable to hear Leland that day. So we will be doing a recording with Leland shortly. And since our schedule is booked well through September, Pam, I think we're just going to have to have a surprise show someday that's not going to be on a Friday and give everybody a little treat somewhere during the month of August. That's for sure. I would love that. We also have uh, Heather Graham coming up, a uh, multiple award-winning writer of about five different genres. She's incredible. We have Ian Woodhead, who is a horror writer from Great Britain. Uh, funny guy, funny guy, funny guy. We and have Rachel? the one and only Rachel Gibson, coming to see us, one of the best romance writers in town. We also have Beth Chata coming, who also writes romance, and she writes steampunk. So that is going to be a good show as well. If you need to find out where we are and you'd like to know who is, is going to be on the show, please go to our website at www.authorsontheair.com and join us on Facebook at Authors on the Air and give us a like you will be automatically entered into our drawing for every 50 likes, regardless of when you liked us. Thank you so much for joining us today, listeners. We enjoyed ha speaking with you, and we were blessed to have C.J. Lyons. And thank you so much for being my smart co-host. Oh, it's been fun. And as we know, since this is Friday, grab a good book, find a good place to go read, put your feet up, and just lose yourself in one of the great books that our many wonderful authors have produced. Take care, Pam. Have a great weekend. Thank you. You too, Anne. Blog Talk Radio, where millions of hosts and listeners gather.